We've all seen The Biggest Loser. It, it's a weight loss competition show. It's very heartwarming, actually, where people go in, they just explain their desire to lose weight, they go through some really rigorous uh, exercise and uh, eating programs, and at the end, come out very triumphant. Uh, but some researchers recently found in studies recently published in the journal Obesity uh, that afterwards, after the show, that weight piled right back on. And more so than they thought, some people actually ended up weighing more than their starting weight wow. on The Biggest Loser just six years later. So this is not meant to make fun of anyone, but it is interesting because they have such close data kept on them. And uh, it, it did show that there is a key missing in the weight loss, but also keeping weight off struggle, which is, uh, it has a few different key factors, one of which is your resting metabolism. So that's how much you're burning when you're not really doing anything. So mm -hmm. how many calories you're burning when you're just sitting there working at your computer. And that changes w along with your metabolism. What they found in this study was that people who had been on the show, their metabolism had slowed significantly during the show, even though it had been at a normal pace for their weight at the start, and then it just stayed low years after. What happened? Mm. It, it was kind of crazy. Uh, they It suspected that leptin might be part of this, uh, part of the answer why. It's just one cluster of hormones that controls hunger. So if you have low amounts of leptin, you're going to be hungry. You're going to feel hungry. And if you compare that with um, the resting metabolism, which would say, for instance, they would find that grown men that were part of this, their resting metabolism, they'd have to eat around maybe 800, 900 calories just to maintain their already inflated weight. So they, it would be, you'd have to eat such a minuscule amount of food to lose any weight. And it's just what is happening with the body here. It's something that isn't figured out just yet. Uh, but this research certainly takes us a little bit closer. Have you ever watched this show? I love the show. I yeah. actually, I remember watching it from the first season. Did you know that Caroline Ray hosted the first season? She did. And, then, Caroline, and my favorite thing is she brought all the contestants into a room it was like a it was like a Vegas buffet, and she was like, mm -hmm. "All right, guys, have at it." And next thing you know, it was like three minutes of all of these obese contestants, like that the pies seems... and the pizza and the fish sticks. I was like, "This I like that. is crazy." I don't know if they've done it for subsequent seasons, but I remember seeing that and being like, "That's mean." That That's seems like really mean. purely mean spirited. Well, not it was at purely all. for television all is right. what it came down to. Makes but sense. I love the show, and I um, I believe I like kind of followed that first season. I thought it was really inspirational. I thought it was, um, I mean, I, there was someone I knew who, there was like a short-lived show, I don't know what network, it was a show called like Fat March or whatever. But I it was don't like, know it, what it was, that is. It was a bunch of like overweight people like walking across America. I think it was like one or two seasons. I remember there was something. a show called Diet Tribe, Diet and I was like, tribe. oh, I get it, you get, you're using the word diatribe. Ah! That's not a positive word, no. <laughs> anyway. But but I want but this is interesting because I'm I'm reading this here. This guy reported blacking out and then eating an entire bag of potato chips. Like that's got to be a difficult way to, like it's how 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 horrible is that you can't even remember all of the well, bad things you're doing to your body. I wanting to change your relationship with food from a psychological level. Uh huh. Uh, but I guess on this physiological level that we're looking at for this study, you're it's something fighting your own body. completely different. Your own body is trying to preserve itself, so it's doing something that bodies naturally do in t times of perhaps starvation, which is try and preserve yourself as well as you can, slow that metabolism down, keep it going. Right. It's kind of going into survival mode. Uh, but there's we have this key, which is the resting metabolism versus leptin, or we don't have the key, rather. We know about these factors mm -hmm. as to what is going on here and why it, it stays at that level years after the, the weight loss. I mean, they started the show with higher metabolisms and they ended with years later. And it, it could just keep on going. It, we only have six years of research on this in particular. And we also don't know why... Um, bariatric surgery is able to stave off the the weight gain better it's, it's complicated and it's going to be different for every person right. even. do any doctors watch Hormone. the show can you guys comment and let us know <laughs> a lot of it is the your body though which i think is the point of the study which right. is your hom hormonal levels your body's um you know thinking is trying to survive and stop stay of starvation it kicks it into completely the wrong way than you want. So it is a complicated puzzle solving the obesity problem, and this is just another part of it. I, it's another step. We're not there yet, though. Uh, audience, have you watched The Biggest Loser or other weight loss shows, and what did you think of them? Or have you tried to lose weight and had a lot of it come back? Let us know below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.
Hank, thanks for joining us this week. Thank you for having me. Yay. Yay. All right. Thanks, audience. Thank you, audience. <laughs>